When used properly, your Vermeer brush chipper will give you many hours of productive service. It is equipped with useful safety features to help protect you from serious injury. But safe work practices are also a necessary part of accident prevention. If not used properly, a brush chipper is capable of grabbing you and pulling you into the machine and into the chipper knives. Death or serious injury will be the result. You must exercise caution and use good judgment. The safety of yourself and others depends on it. This video will present selected operating procedures for Vermeer brush chippers, but it is not a substitute for a thorough and complete reading and understanding of the operator's manual and its safety instructions. You may have a Vermeer model brush chipper with an infeed system or machine components that look different than the ones shown in this video. However, most operating functions of these machines are the same. Before operating the machine, always read the operator's manual. Know its content and follow its instructions. As you view this video, stop and replay at any time to review the information or consult the operator's manual. Viewing this video more than once and referring to your operator's manual will reinforce what you have learned. Allow only responsible, properly trained people to operate the brush chipper. Carefully supervise any inexperienced operators. All operators must be familiar with the worksite safety rules and regulations and must be mentally and physically capable of operating the machine safely. Advise anyone who will operate it to read the operator's manual carefully and watch this video. As you prepare the brush chipper for transporting to your job site, there are a number of important safety precautions to keep in mind. For your specific model, refer to your operator's manual for selecting the correct towing vehicle and attaching your brush chipper. If equipped with a coupler style hitch, loosen the loop nut and align the towing vehicle with the hitch ball beneath the coupler socket. Lower the coupler socket over the hitch ball and tighten the loop nut while ensuring the square head of the bolt is in the square cavity of the clamping lip. If equipped with a pintle hitch, open the pintle and back the towing vehicle until the pintle is centered under the pintle ring of the hitch. Lower the tongue until the pintle ring is seated into the pintle hook and latch the pintle. Lock it into place with the cotter pin. Cross safety chains under the tongue and attach them to the towing vehicle. If the machine is equipped with optional electric brakes, attach a breakaway cable to the towing vehicle. Attach the electrical connector to the towing vehicle. Check that the highway lights and brakes are functioning properly. If you will be working alongside the road, use the necessary traffic diversion methods to redirect motor vehicles and pedestrian traffic. Follow your local highway codes and regulations. Feed all material into the brush chipper from the curbside of the unit. This will allow you to stay away from traffic. Never set up a chipper beneath the tree your crew is pruning or removing, including the area where throw lines, rigging lines, and climbing ropes will be used. Provide enough room around the chipper for the operator to maneuver while feeding brush. Clear away any brush or obstacles that might interfere or cause the operator to trip, stumble, or become entangled while feeding brush. Manage lines, ropes, and other tools so they cannot become entangled in the brush pile. Examine your brush before feeding it into the chipper. Make sure no contaminants are fed, such as stones, wire, nails, or other metal objects which may damage chipper knives or become dangerous projectiles. Also make sure lines, vines, and ropes are not in the brush being fed. 
These materials and anything attached to them will be pulled in at high speed. Death or serious injury is possible if you are struck, entangled, or pulled into the machine. The discharge chute is equipped with a stop to prevent discharging material over the feed table area. Material leaving the chute can cause injury or blindness. Never discharge the chips where there might be bystanders or coworkers. Rotate the discharge chute to the direction you want to deposit the chip material and lock the chute into position. Fold down your infeed table. Its design is essential for safety when feeding the chipper. Never operate the machine with the feed table removed or modified. The brush chipper feed table is equipped with the lower feed stop bar system that provides a means for the operator to quickly stop the feed rollers if snagged by a branch and pulled toward the machine. Stopping the feed rollers is accomplished by bumping the lower feed stop bar. The location of the bar makes it possible for the operator's leg to strike the bar and shut off the feed, either intentionally or automatically in an emergency situation. If the operator's leg does not strike the bar, the feed will not stop. It is therefore very important to follow all safety instructions for feeding material into the chipper. These instructions are essential for your safety by helping you avoid an emergency situation in the first place. Carefully review the safety sign on your machine and review similar instructions in your operator's manual. We will demonstrate these safety procedures for feeding brush later in this video. To prepare for brush feeding, all operators must use proper personal protective equipment. These include eye protection. This may consist of wraparound safety glasses or safety goggles, hearing protection, either earplugs or earmuff style protectors, a hard hat, and safety shoes. Some conditions may also require reflective clothing. If you wear gloves, gloves with wide flared cuffs must not be worn. They are more likely to be snagged by a branch and possibly pull you toward the infeed mechanism or the chipper knives. Gloves must have narrow cuffs. Before you start the engine, make sure all personnel are clear of the machine. The feed control bar is in neutral, engine throttle is at idle, and the clutch is disengaged. Start the engine following the instructions in the operator's manual for your particular machine. Your brush chipper is equipped with an upper feed control bar and a lower feed stop bar. Do not operate the chipper unless both upper and lower bars are installed and operating correctly. To check the lower feed stop bar, position the upper feed control bar for forward feeding and start the feed rollers. Bump the lower feed stop bar with your hand or leg to stop the infeed mechanism. To check the upper feed control bar, position the bar for forward feeding and start the feed rollers. Push the bar to the center stop position. To reverse, and back to forward. Pull the bar to the rear stop position. Make sure the feed control bar allows you to quickly stop the rollers. Do not continue unless both upper and lower bars are working properly. Once you are ready to begin feeding brush, place the feed control bar back into forward feed and start the feed rollers. Some Vermeer brush chippers are equipped with feed roller speed control. You can adjust the feed roller speed for slower or faster feeding depending on the type of material you are working with. Vermeer chippers are designed to help keep you away from the feed mechanism and chipper knives by providing a long feed chute and feed table. 
All Vermeer chippers have feed tables with sloped sides. This design allows you to feed brush from the side. When feeding brush this way, the sides of the feed table help protect you from being pulled into the machine by providing a barrier between you and the infeed mechanism. But it is also essential that you do your part by following important safety precautions while operating the machine. Make it a practice to always feed from the side rather than directly behind the machine. As soon as the limb starts feeding, release the limb and turn away. Let the feed mechanism pull the material into the machine. To inform you and other workers of potential hazards and essential safety precautions, safety signs are placed on the machine. Keep these safety signs in good condition and replace any that are damaged or missing. Vermeer brush chippers, BC1000 XL and larger, are equipped with an eco-idle engine control system. The operator can select the eco-idle function which automatically lowers engine speed to a preset lower RPM. If no material has been shipped for one or five minutes as selected by the operator. Eco idle engine control system can help consume less fuel if the feeding process has frequent interruptions and also aid in noise reduction. Vermeer brush chippers are equipped with Smart Feed, a system that helps improve feeding efficiency by allowing you to start the feeding process and then turn away. Large limbs with protruding branches may present a hazard unless you handle them correctly. All chippers which are capable of feeding a limb are also capable of pulling you in with the limb. This risk can be reduced by following these important safety precautions. Always feed material with the base entering the feed mechanism first. If you feed the tip of the limb first, a protruding branch or V-shaped limb can catch you and pull you toward the feed mechanism. By feeding with the base first, any protruding branches will tend to slip past you without catching you or your clothing. Sometimes during feeding, a limb may suddenly turn or move sideways and strike you. To reduce the possibility of being struck, release the limb immediately after it begins feeding and then turn away. If material being fed strikes the lower feed stop bar and stops the end feed mechanism, you may use one of the following procedures. You may override the feed system by pressing the green hold to run reset button and feeding the material into the chipper until it has passed over the lower feed stop bar. You can also resume chipping by placing the upper feed control bar into reverse, backing out and repositioning the material. Then placing the upper feed control bar into forward feeding and refeeding the material. You can use the Tree Commander remote control to activate the reset hold to run button to restart the feeding action of the chipper again if the lower feed stop bar is accidentally tripped as well as stop or reverse the infeed of material. When feeding short material, never climb onto the feed table to hand feed material into the feed mechanism. If you climb onto the feed table for closer access with the machine operating, you are in great danger, including death or serious injury. If you climb onto the feed table to reach for short branches or twigs, they can feed into the machine before you can let go, or you might accidentally get too close and touch the feed mechanism. Do not try to kick material into the feed rollers. If the feed mechanism or knives catch your foot, you will not be able to pull yourself free. 
Do not depend on the upper control bar or the lower feed stop bar to stop the feed mechanism and prevent you from being pulled into the machine. You may not be able to reach the bar or have time to move the bar to stop the feed mechanism. When feeding short material, always stand to the side of the feed table and use a branch to push the material into the feeding mechanism. Make sure lines, vines, and ropes are not in the brush being fed. These materials and anything attached to them will be pulled in at high speed. Death or serious injury is possible if you are struck, entangled, or pulled into the machine. If smart feed is unsuccessful in feeding material and you have issues with the jam in the infeed mechanism, your first step should be to use the upper feed control bar to reverse the material out. Reposition it and feed it again. Trim the material if it continues to present feeding issues. If the discharge chute or chipper housing becomes plugged, you will need to completely shut the machine down in order to clear the plug. Do not try to remove a plug while the engine is running. Follow the normal shutdown procedure as described in your operator's manual. Place the upper feed control bar into neutral. Reduce the engine speed to idle. Disengage the drive mechanism. Shut off the engine and remove the key. The clutch on machines with a centrifugal clutch will automatically disengage when engine RPM is reduced to low idle. The cutter disc or drum will continue to rotate for some time after the drive mechanism is disengaged. Before opening the chipper housing, verify the cutter disc or drum has come to a complete stop. Depending on the chipper, check either end of the shaft, drive belts, or disc to make certain that rotation has stopped. Follow your operator's manual for the proper way to tell if the disc or drum has stopped turning. Do not open the chipper housing to check for rotation. Do not restart the disc or drum while the housing is open. You can be struck by thrown objects or be severely injured by the rotating disc or drum. Follow your operator's manual for the proper way to gain access to a plugged discharge chute or chipper housing. Wear gloves when cleaning out the plugged area and use caution when working near the exposed chipper knives. Thoroughly clean the plugged area before closing the housing. If material builds up around the feed mechanism and impairs operation, follow your operator's manual for directions on how to access and clean the infeed mechanism. Never climb onto the feed table for any reason unless the machine is completely shut down and all components have stopped moving. Winching limbs to the brush chipper is possible with one operator, but it works best with two people. One to operate the winch controls and one working the winch line and chain choker. Never pull out the winch line or allow the winch line to be in the path of brush or limbs feeding into the machine. If the line is grabbed by the chipper knives, it can be pulled in at high speed and strike anyone in its path. Death or serious injury is possible. Never run the winch with the chipper disconnected from a towing vehicle. Store the winch line in its interlock storage location where it cannot be snagged by brush entering the machine. Never pull out the winch line with the chain choker attached to the line. If the line is grabbed by the chipper knives, it can pull the chain choker at high speed and strike anyone in its path. Death or serious injury is possible. 
Never pull out the winch line by placing your hand or arm through the loop at the end of the line. If the line is grabbed by the chipper knives, you can be pulled toward the chipper at high speed before you have time to remove your hand or arm from the loop. Death or serious injury is possible. Grab the winch line, not the loop, and carry the chain choker in the other hand. Brush chippers with an optional winch also have a winch interlock hook. Remove the winch rope from the hook. The hook will slide down, allowing the winch rope to be pulled out. The feed rollers are off. Attach the winch rope to the hook. Tighten the rope and pull the hook up. The winch will be locked out. Feed rollers are operating. Follow your operator's manual for complete information. Remove the winch rope from the interlock hook. Pull out the winch line as far as needed. Inspect the line and choker for damage or wear before each pull. Install the chain choker around the large end of the limb to be pulled. Pass the end of the chain through the ring and pull the choker tight. Attach the loop of the winch line to the end of the choker chain and place both on the ground. Stand clear of the limb and winch line while they are being pulled toward the machine. Never attach the winch line to another limb while a previous limb is feeding into the machine. 
If the winch line is grabbed by the chipper knives, the attached limb can be pulled toward the machine with great force. Anyone in the path of the limb may be killed or seriously injured. Wait for all material to be fed through the chipper before pulling out the winch line and before attaching the winch line to the choker on the next limb. Using the winch controls, pull the winch line and limb toward the machine until the limb can be lowered onto the feed table. Extend the winch line out until the chain choker becomes slack and the line can be removed. Make sure the limb is stable on the feed table before disconnecting the winch line. Serious injury can result if struck by a limb falling off the feed table. Reposition the chain choker near the back of the limb and reattach the winch line. Pull the limb into the chipper until it touches the feed rollers. Stop winching, momentarily engage the end feed rollers until the limb has just started into the feed rollers. Remove the winch line from the choker and the choker from the limb. Store the winch line and the choker in its interlocked storage location and follow normal operating procedures to feed the remainder of the limb through the chipper. Failure to detach the chain choker from the limb before continuing to feed will result in severe equipment damage. Metal can be thrown out of the infeed chute by the chipper drum, resulting in death or serious injury. Only use a Vermeer Corporation approved winch line and chain choker. The removable choker is an important safety feature. Never permanently attach a choker to the winch line. Never substitute any other type of choker. Refer to your parts manual for ordering replacement parts from your independent authorized Vermeer dealer. If the winch line loop becomes damaged, a qualified rigging shop or marina can resplice a new loop on the end of the line. See your maintenance manual for loop size specifications. The original loop size must be duplicated. If a smaller loop size is made, it is more likely to snag on your hand or arm if the line is pulled into the machine. Some models of Vermeer brush chippers are available with an optional remote control unit. The remote control allows the operator to control some machine functions up to 100 feet 30 meters away in normal operating conditions. Using the remote control requires the operator to wear all the same personal protective equipment as when operating at the machine's control panel. Follow the instructions in the operator's manual for remote storage location, control selector switch, access code, controls operation, charging, and other remote functions. The amber beacon on top of the machine is an important safety feature. Its function is to ensure all chipper operators are aware when the machine is being remotely controlled and to not hand feed material. Feed by machine only. If the beacon fails to operate when the remote control is selected, the machine controller will not allow for remote operation. Follow your operator's manual for more information. Never start or restart the infeed rollers without first looking into the infeed area to ensure all other people are clear. Do not allow anyone to manually feed the chipper when remotely controlled and the amber beacon is on. Feed rollers can unexpectedly start, stop, or reverse at any time. The infeed alert horn will sound only when the chipper is being controlled by the remote. It will alert the operator when the feed rollers are about to start in the forward direction only. If forward feed is resumed within three seconds, the horn will not sound. 
If you wish to stop the brush chipper using the quickest method with the remote, press the red engine stop button to shut off the engine and stop the brush chipper. Remember to always shut off the remote and place it in storage when finished. Chipper knives and the drum or disc should be inspected periodically and maintained according to the instructions provided with your machine. From your brush chippers will be productive for you only when the chipping system is properly installed, adjusted, and maintained. Inspection and maintenance are essential. If a machine component is loose, damaged, or out of adjustment, and you continue to use the machine, a cutting component may break loose and become a dangerous projectile. Not only will this cause extensive damage to the machine, but it may cause death or serious injury. Following safe working practices when feeding brush into a brush chipper is absolutely essential. Use good judgment when operating your Vermeer brush chipper. Respect the potential dangers and the fatal consequences of improper operation. Squeeze on bottom side of handle and lift to unlock the hitch. Align the towing vehicle with the hitch ball beneath the coupler socket. Lower coupler over hitch ball. Locking levers should automatically click down and lock into place. Indicator pointer on side of coupler should be in the green zone. Attach breakaway cable to the towing vehicle. Attach electrical connector to towing vehicle. Check the highway lights function properly. Push park brake lever forward to release park brake. Feed roller will not move unless engine speed is at high RPM. Lower feed stop bar and side feed stop bars are reset. Rear amber warning light not blinking. Upper feed control bar is in forward or reverse. Reset hold to run button is pressed. Pressing lower feed stop bar or side feed stop bars will quickly stop feed roller and rear center warning light begins flashing quickly. Reset hold to run button works as described above. The lower feed stop bar system and side feed stop bars provide a means for the operator to quickly stop the feed roller if snagged by a branch and pulled toward the machine. The system is intended for your safety and must be maintained in good operating condition. Do not operate the machine if the lower feed stop bar or side feed stop bars are not functioning properly. Stopping the feed roller is accomplished by bumping the lower feed stop bar or side feed stop bars. The feed stop bars are strategically located to make it possible for an operator to strike the bars and shut off the feed either intentionally or automatically in an emergency situation. If the operator does not strike the bars, the feed will not stop. It is therefore very important to follow all safety instructions for feeding material into the chipper. These instructions are essential for your safety by helping you avoid an emergency situation in the first place. Carefully review the safety sign on your machine and review similar instructions in your operator's manual.